Welcome. This is Lily Chu with the Better Business Bureau Education Foundation. Our mission is to blow the whistle on scammers. If you want to check out a business or charity, come to us. Our reports are trustworthy, unlike many of those glowing online reviews, which are often paid for by the seller. We maintain strict business standards to ensure you get honest and reliable reports. You can call us or go online to bbb.org to look up companies locally and across the country. We've also created a military website just for the armed forces, because believe it or not, there's scammers out there that are targeting our soldiers. And I've uploaded handouts for you at BBBEF WordPress. Just click on resources and you'll see information on car buying, paying for college, establishing credit, and much more. You're always welcome to contact me. If you have any questions or concerns, I'm a social worker and I like helping people. It's free and you won't have to cough up your social security number or any other personal information. When in doubt, check it out. Chances are you're not going to be living at home for the rest of your life and renting your first apartment can be exciting. But before you sign on the dotted line, there are a few things to consider. Before even starting your search, it's important for first-time renters to create a budget of your monthly bills. This will give you an idea of how much you can really afford to spend on rent. I know most of you are already groaning at the word budget, so call it a spending plan if that inspires you to get down to business, because this is going to help you map out your next steps towards freedom. The first thing you want to do is determine your income from all different sources. So if you have a job, that's your paycheck. If you get an allowance, scholarship, grant, loan money, it's all considered income. Then you want to figure out your net monthly income. This is what you actually bring home in your pocket after the government and your employer have taken out for things like taxes, health insurance, retirement. Once you've determined this figure, you want to start listing your expenses. Start with your fixed expenses. These are the things that stay the same each month, like your car payment or insurance premium. Things like that probably won't be changing from month to month. Then you want to list your variable expenses, obviously the things that do change, such as how much you spend on food, clothing, entertainment. That will probably be different from month to month. Basically, you want to write down everything you spend your money on. While you're listing your expenses, be sure to build in a reward for yourself. Whether it's going to a movie or a meal out, you want to thank yourself for doing all this hard work. But make that reward something realistic. You don't want to break the bank. Next, determine your short-term, medium-term, and long-term financial goals. You may be saving up to buy some furniture or appliances for your new place. And don't forget about other stuff like dishes and towels. If you haven't already watched Reality Check, go look at it because it details how much it costs to live on your own. Once you've listed all your expenses, total it up and subtract it from your net monthly income. Apply what's left to your goals. Sounds great. But what happens when you subtract your expenses from your income and you've got nothing left over. Or worse yet, you don't even have money to pay your bills. What do you do? Well, it's time to tighten your belt a little bit and quit spending so much money. But you say, how can I possibly do that? I hardly spend anything right now, but when I get to the end of the month, I look in my wallet and it's empty. If that's you, I'm going to challenge you. Write down everything you're spending your money on for at least a month. Six is best. Make a list of everything you buy, the date you bought it, how much you spent, and how you paid for it. Cash, credit, debit. At the end of your tracking, you'll know exactly where your money is going and how you may be able to cut back. Say you buy a Starbucks latte every day on the way to work. Even if you get the cheapest option, it's still going to cost you about $3.50 a day which equals over 80 bucks a month. And that's not even including weekends. If you just made your coffee at home, you could save yourself at least $70 a month, which you could apply towards a nicer apartment or a financial goal like retirement or an emergency fund. Yeah, I know you're young and you're not thinking about retirement yet, but the sooner you start saving, the less you'll have to sock away each month 
and a decent emergency fund is a must. Tracking your spending habits gives you an eagle's eye view of exactly where your money is going and how you can pull in a little bit. Then you want to determine what you really need versus what you simply want. Do you really need that trendy, and by that I mean expensive, loft? Or will an efficiency do just fine? We'll talk about what an efficiency is later, but think tiny. Consider what location works best for you. Near work or family, close to bus stops or light rail. What about grocery or drug stores? Then of course, which perks are most important to you? Do you need large rooms or laundry facilities on site? While you may not need a washer dryer in your apartment, trust me, it'll be a hassle if you have to haul your stuff to a laundromat. Do you want a gym or swimming pool? Remember, the more perks, the more expensive it will be. What leasing terms do you need? Do you want to lock yourself and your rental cost in for six months to a year? Or do you want the flexibility of renting month to month? Signing a long-term lease means your rent will stay the same each month, but you're committing to pay the rent for the full term. So if you want to move out early, you'll probably pay a hefty fee to break the lease or still have to pay the rent for the remaining months. However, if the landlord leases your apartment before your time is up, you may be off the hook. If you choose month to month, it will likely be more expensive and the landlord can raise your rent at any time. The upside is that you can move pretty much whenever you want. So if you want to be able to move on short notice without paying a penalty, a month to month rental is your best option. Bear in mind though, you'll still need to give your landlord at least 30 days notice or more depending on the lease agreement. Do you need a place that takes pets? Most will have restrictions on the size, weight, and maybe even breed of your pet. Be aware, most landlords will require a pet deposit, and many times that's not refundable, even if your cat doesn't pee on the carpet or cause any damage. Some will even charge your pet rent, usually about $25 to $35 a month. Once you add it all up, you may find it's going to be a lot more expensive than you thought and you may want to consider finding a roommate to help cut the costs. But before you move in with anyone, there's some things you need to do to make sure the experience is a good one. First, try to choose compatible housemates. If you're a late night person, you probably don't want an early bird roommate who's up at the crack of dawn getting ready for work, making coffee and blow drying their hair. In the same breath, if you're a morning person, you don't want a bartender as a roommate who'll be rolling in at 3 a.m. with their buddies for a late night party. And while you may think moving in with your best friend will be a blast, you might find your friend is a slob, leaving dirty dishes everywhere and borrowing your clothes without permission, then throwing them in a stinky, sweaty pile in the corner. Yikes. You really want to interview your prospective roommate like your life depends on it, because it just may. Before you move in, Sit down with your roommate and create a written agreement covering major issues such as rent and space. How will it be split? With rent, who's going to be responsible for paying it? Most landlords don't want multiple payments. They want one check for the full amount of the rent. And if you're the one writing the check, be sure you get your roommate's portion early enough for it to clear the bank before you write the check. On space, Say your roommate gets there before you and moves into the giant master suite with a big walk-in closet and an attached bathroom, leaving you with a smaller bedroom, shoebox closet, and a walk down the hall to get to the bathroom. Will you still be splitting the rent 50-50? If you haven't made an agreement ahead of time, you've got problems before you've even unloaded the moving van. With household chores, Who's going to be responsible for cleaning and on what schedule? While you may think the bathroom needs to be cleaned at least once a week, your roommate might think, until hairballs are rolling across the floor, it's fine. Food. Will you be sharing food? If so, who does the shopping and the cooking? If you're not sharing, you may want to have a specific shelf in the pantry and fridge for your stuff. 
You may even have to write your name on it because inevitably it will get mixed up. Noise. When should music be turned off or down low? If you like your music loud, agree on a time when you can play it at full tilt. Guess. Are overnight guests okay? If so, for how long? It's a drag when your roommate brings in a guest who ends up staying for weeks, eating your food and hogging the TV without helping out with the rent or chores. Moving. If one of you decides to move, how much notice must be given? Usually it should be 30 days. Does the one who's moving have to find an acceptable substitute? And it's always smart to include a mediation clause, which says each roommate agrees to participate in mediation before you start screaming at each other or one of you breaks the agreement by moving out. Designating a neutral third party to listen to both sides of any agreement will help you and your roommates in the long run. Lastly, be specific as possible, especially on issues that are important to you. If dirty dishes in the sink drive you up the wall, agree that the kitchen has to be cleaned by 11 p.m. each night. If occasional guests are no problem, but the thought of your roommate's non-paying boyfriend reading magazines in the bathroom for an hour and a half makes you crazy, make sure agree your agreement is clear on guests. It's always best to put all of this in writing. It's too easy to forget or misunderstand what you said six months ago. And while most of this isn't legally binding, that is, a judge isn't going to order your roommate to clean the bathroom, nor is the landlord responsible for enforcement, a judge will, however, enforce financial agreements, such as how the rent is to be shared. Doing this ahead of time and in writing forces you and your roommates to take your commitments and responsibilities seriously. The more you can anticipate possible problems from the start, the better prepared you'll be to handle disputes which do arise later. Okay, so you've signed your written agreement, but your roommate turns out to be a nightmare. If the situation gets bad enough, you'll probably end up arguing about who should leave. As a general rule, you nor your roommate can terminate their tenancy. Only your landlord can do that. But say it gets so bad, your roommate decides to leave in the middle of the month. If you're a month-to-month -month tenant, your roommate is legally responsible for giving the landlord proper written notice and paying rent through the end of the notice. If your roommate skips out, leaving you holding the rent bag, remember, each of you is independently liable for all of the rent, which means you have to pay the full amount. In a case like this, you may need to ask permission to pay the rent late or break it up into smaller amounts paid over a few weeks. You may even ask the landlord to use your departed roommate's share of the security deposit to help pay the rent until you can find an acceptable replacement. Be aware, the unauthorized departure of a roommate gives the landlord the option of evicting you, even if you're able to pay the full rent. Bad behavior. Your roommate comes home drunk and trashes the laundry room. The next day, the landlord's at your door with an eviction notice. Know that the landlord can hold all tenants responsible for the bad behavior of just one and terminate your lease with the appropriate notice. Another good reason to make sure you've got a responsible roommate. If your roommate bails out, leaving you in the lurch, you may decide you're done with roommates and you want to find a place of your own. To prevent the landlord from keeping your security deposit or listing you as a deadbeat at the credit bureau, you'll want to be sure to immediately give the required amount of written notice. Again, usually 30 days if you're renting month to month. Don't wait until you can't pay the rent next month and get an eviction notice. If you have a long-term lease, let the landlord know immediately in writing that you plan to move because you can't afford the rent without your roommate. You may even ask for permission to leave early without a penalty, but good luck with that. Before you move, be extra nice when it comes to showing the unit to prospective renters and make sure your place looks inviting. Doing this is not just a courtesy to your landlord, but to your advantage as well, since as soon as a new tenant takes over, the sooner your liability for the remaining balance of the rent ends. In the meanwhile, 
you'll probably want to do your best to find a new tenant who's acceptable to the landlord. But if you decide to stay and you found the perfect roommate, check with your landlord before letting the new person move in. You can't just let your sweetie or BFF take over. Most landlords will insist you sign a new lease or rental agreement because they will want the new person's name on the list. Be aware, since you'll be signing a new lease, the landlord has the legal right to change other conditions of your lease, like go up on your rent and increase the security deposit. Before you sign, take plenty of time to look over the lease. Don't be pressured into signing anything until you are comfortable. Once you've signed on the dotted line, you've entered into a legal and binding agreement, which basically means you're saying okay to whatever is in that document. Be sure to know how and when you need to pay your rent. Some complexes may give you a grace period of a few days. So even if your rent is due on the first, they won't ding you with a late fee until the 5th. This doesn't mean you should regularly be paying your rent late, though, because they will frown on that and may report your late payments to the credit bureau, which will lower your credit score and end up costing you more for other things like car insurance. Utilities. Find out who pays utilities like water, electricity, and gas. Some apartments will include utilities in your rent, which may sound wonderful, but this is usually more costly than just paying your own. If they're included, they will advertise bills paid. It's also important to find out if there are any other fees you may have to pay, such as garbage, parking, or storage. If you want to paint or make other changes to your apartment, make sure you run it by your landlord first so you don't lose your security deposit. Find out what you need to do if your apartment needs repairs. Does the request need to be in writing? How long does it normally take for them to respond? You don't want a backed up toilet for weeks. Auto renewals. Check if there's an auto renewal policy which will automatically sign you up for another lease term. Many times the auto renewal will kick in 60 days before your lease ends, which means if you give your 30 day notice that you're moving out when your lease ends, it's too late, you're stuck there. Some complexes without auto renewal may just convert your lease into a month to month if you don't renew when it expires, which can end up being very costly. Some report an extra $150 a month. Definitely check out the penalties for moving before your lease term is up. See what their policies are about having roommates. Some even have stipulations for having roommates of the opposite sex. Also, if you think you may be out of town for a while, Ask if you can rent your place to someone else while you're gone. This is what's called subletting. Be sure you understand everything on the lease and any other documents. If necessary, take it to someone you trust to look over it before you sign. And always read the fine print, because that's usually where they try to hide any bad news. Here's some abbreviations you may want to know. Some are pretty obvious, which I'll skip over. Others, not so much. When you see a number with a slash and another number, that indicates how many bedrooms and bathrooms. If you see half a bath, it means there's no tub or shower, just the toilet and sink. Cable may be included in your rent or simply available for purchase on your own. An efficiency apartment is going to be very small. Your bedroom, living room, and kitchen are all in one room and any appliances like a fridge or stove may not be full size. Do you want your apartment to be fully furnished? This may be handy if you don't have furniture yet. Buying furniture for a whole apartment could get expensive. When you view a furnished apartment, ask the landlord which items will be included with the place when you move in. You can also ask before you view the place. That way you'll know what other furniture and appliances you'll need to get before you move. The downside of a furnished apartment is the rent will be higher. However, if you move a lot or don't plan to stay in that place for very long, it could be worth it. Some complexes may include parking in their garage or for a fee. Others may designate a reserved space in a covered or uncovered lot or may not provide a space at all. As covered in Reality Check, 
A security deposit is what you pay up front in case of damage, and it's usually one month's rent, which the landlord will keep until after you move out. A studio apartment is much like an efficiency, but will usually have full-size appliances. Utilities may or may not be included in your rent, and there could be additional fees for garbage or sewer. A washer dryer hookup means the appliances are not included, but you can bring your own. After you've narrowed your search to a couple of places, you'll want to inspect your future home. Do a walkthrough with the landlord present. Be sure to take pictures and document any damage or problems in writing, then ask your landlord to sign it. Do this again with your landlord before you move out. And don't forget to check common areas like laundry rooms, mailboxes, and garbage dumpsters. Request that things like chipped paint, dripping faucets, running toilets, holes in the walls, torn or dirty carpet are repaired before you move in. If not, you could end up losing your security deposit, which, remember, is usually a month's rent. Bring items such as your bank account information, social security card, recent paycheck stubs, resume, and references if you have them. Many apartments charge application fees and may require credit and background checks before you move in, so bring extra money to cover those costs. A few final tips. When looking for a new apartment, take a friend and drive around areas you'd like to live in and look for yard signs. Private homeowners may not advertise online. Of course, go online to check apartment locator sites. Some will even include reviews and ratings for crime, walkability, and public transportation. Real estate sites are especially good if you're looking to rent a house or condo. Scan the classified ads, but be careful. Scammers love to hijack real listings and change the price and contact info. If they refuse to do a walkthrough with you for any reason or want money up front, it's likely a scam. Be sure to view my previous video, Reality Check, to estimate your cost of living. It will give you a good idea of what to expect out there. You don't want to get caught out by any nasty surprises.